Hi, everyone. This is the short story is again. And today I'm super excited to welcome Naoki from Team Dental Lab Tokyo. Naoki is the head of Dental Lab Tokyo. So today we're in for something really interesting. Hi, Naoki. Hi, Irina. And hi, everyone. I'm Naoki Tanaka from Dental Lab Tokyo. And uh, I'm creative director. Uh, and uh, I'm working on a, a lot of work uh, for making new expression, new solutions, new experiences in Japan. Hello. Thanks, Nayoki. So my first question to you is probably something that I asked your colleagues, because before that, in the previous ep- one of the previous episodes, we met amazing Hiromi and Yusaku. And we were talking about DLT from their perspective. So Dental Lab Tokyo was set up quite some time ago in 2014. Uh, my question to you as the head of this division now, what was the thinking behind it? And why would Dentsu need such a specific sociocultural research lab with such level of sophistication and uniqueness? Okay. Uh, the short story is we saw a gap between the production method in the advertising industry, which continued for more than half a century, and what the evolution of the media would allow us to do. Uh, the advertising industry has evolved around the television, TV commercial advertisement, and uh, graphics over more than half a century. Speaking of myself, I also write copies, uh, copy phrase, and the planning TV commercial. Around after the year 2010, finally, the digital media and the digital infrastructure started to enter the industry, and the work for creating a new experience, experience and expression started to increase. I thought we have a limitation, which means we can create the idea, only we can explain with paper or video image, and the idea that our client can accept can understand. How about other ideas using computer and the technology and the stuff? Yeah, that's the reason. That's why I started new R&D team, which can quickly do prototyping and the go between planning and the testing many, many times. Yeah, that's the reason for creating a new team. Dental Lab Tokyo's mission is unexpected experiences to move people's hearts. And it sounds amazing. Uh, but I've heard of my problem is that I've heard of emerging experiences before, but unexpected. So how do you define those and how do you track whether unexpected experiences are a success and they land within a particular audience? Okay. Uh, first of all, let me speak of extreme cases. We and I do not have to always rely on technology. When words are the most effective way, we use only words. When graphics posters are the best solution, we use graphic posters. The method we choose is what we feel the best at the precise moment. If the analog methods are effective, we choose them. Using technology and unexpected experience uh, in a close relationship. And uh, people's heart are moved strongly when they most, they met something they have never imagined before. And this is very effective in accomplishing branding or business goals. After all, what is required of creativity industry, including business element, is this aspect. And uh, we have a creative philosophy regarding this point. We always accept creating something that goes outside of expectations. And we require the computers, data, and the technology to create such unexpected experiences. Maybe someone may say, maybe some may say, oh, you can't expect your output. Oh, you are not professional. But it's okay for me. Uh, that's our style. So most of, most of the work we created and made under this process, including Paralympics opening ceremony or camouflage patterns of unlabeled, uh, and these works won the award and gained recognition in Japan. Words like computational, generative, or parametric appears very often in our production. So we are creators, 
But at the same time, we are the first spectator. We always enjoy our creating process. Right. One of the most prominent projects uh, from Dental Lab Tokyo recently is the All Players Welcome project. There's this guy, Masatane Muto. He's a DJ. And um, he was diagnosed with amyotropic lateral sclerosis. Basically, what you did is you built a special algorithm, right, to help him express himself freely and still keep doing his DJ sets. My questions are, how did you arrive at this idea? How did you collaborate with Masa? And how does the tech behind it all work? Yeah, uh, the story goes back uh, three, hours, three years ago. Uh, in 2021, the Olympic and the Paralympics Games were carried out in Tokyo, one year later from the original plan because of COVID. I joined this event as creative members for the Paralympic Games or in opening ceremony. Especially for the parade of athletes, I executed a colorful projection mapping using motion graphics, word, music, data, and technology. And at the same time, through Paralympics, we met Masa, uh, Masatani Muto-san, and many, many other para performers and para athletes. Through this encounter, we realized one big thing. There are a whole creativity we haven't yet seen in this world. So I have two reasons to start All Players Welcome Project. The first one, before this encounter, I was feeling like I'm supporting someone with disabilities, but it was completely the opposite. They had a strong vision, stronger creativity that are so powerful. I realized by bringing the, these creativities out, the world would be able to unleash new sources of creativity. And uh, Chris Yoshia-san, uh, the producer whom I, I worked with at the Paralympics opening ceremony, said, this ability is a different ability. And I believe this is very true. We want to prove this point. So to prove this point, I launched All Players Welcome and the Project Humanity. All Players Welcome is a project where we developed three musical instruments that only requires gaze input to perform. Two musicians with ALS, uh, Masa and a Pawn from Tokyo and from France trained themselves to play this instrument. And uh, finally, in 2022, we have taken these tools for live performances to Can Lion. We connected three cities, and the Masa and the Pong created the music live and collaborated with a singer in the main stage in the Can in real time. I know that you guys recently launched the second phase of the project, and it now includes the metaverse avatars and an ability of full scale performance, almost physical ones. So the first show was in Austria. How was it? And what's the potential application of the metaverse layer? Yeah, uh, at our Electronica in Leeds, Austria, uh, one month ago, uh, a lot of media, media art fans from all over the Europe and from all over the world attended this show. And they were so excited and danced together with Marcel's music and the live DJ. And this experience was revolutionary for me, and it gave me a lot of confidence and a lot of happiness. I was uh, so excited as well, and I actually cried at the end. Yeah, that was really nice stage for me. ALS is an um, interactable disease that causes the muscles throughout the body to harden, and the body becomes gradually immobile, very, very uh, terrible disease. For example, Professor Stephen Hawking has these same conditions. And still, mm -hmm. 350,000 people around the world are fighting this disease. And at phase one, we made a musical performance tool using eye gaze input, I mentioned before. And uh, at phase two, this time, we made a new tool using electromyography 
to move body again. Have you heard of electromyography, Irina? Uh, no. I don't think so. Nope. <laughs> okay. All right. So uh, they are uh, electric signals that are get generated when our muscles move like this. Very, very small electric signal occurred uh, when we move muscles. And uh, we can actually detect them using sensors. So by syncing these electric signals and the avatar, digital avatar in metaverse, uh, people living with ALS would regain their uh, physically again, physicality again. Uh, this is an overview of this project. And uh, our challenge was this. ALS is thought to be a disease where the muscles stop moving. While you may not be able to raise your arm or to work, uh, we are still able to capture electromyography signals. We thought it would be over time our normal assumption on ALS. Actually, we didn't prepare for a long time for this project. We just found out that the massage electromyography signals can be detected very clearly in May this year, just four or five months ago. And we started the actual implementation in August this year. Yeah, this project, a very, very fast project, fast prototyping. Why exactly did you choose a live DJ set to demonstrate all the potential of this project? Why that format, not anything else? Uh, the reason why we thought of DJing this time uh, is it started with conversation with Master. I asked him, what do you want to do? if you are able to move your body again. And uh, Masa answered, he wants to wave his hands, wave his hand and correspond with the audience during uh, DJ time. Yeah, he has been DJing after he was diagnosed with ALS, but he said the hardest thing for him emotionally is he cannot correspond with the audience. I said, okay, sure, let's go, let's do it. So, and we started to see the vision for the performance at a, a, a Ars Electronica in Australia. As always, as always, my key question, mm -hmm. how are you measuring the success? Because I do understand it's very important to measure the success in, I don't know, one happy person that can express himself now, even if that's metaverse. Mm -hmm. But um, in terms of the business incentive again, how are we looking at this? Yeah, for me, in my opinion, uh, it's to see these tools used in ordinary everyday life, ordinary society life, not just in special places like on, on stage, also to see more players join. Of course, that's not easy to do by ourselves. We needed the cooperation of companies and the public administrations. and. This UI works well with Metabus and VR for all communication and so on. So we are planning to do that next in Metabus. So we want to make a uh, very easy using uh, communication tool uh, in the Metabus and in, in VR. Anyway, we should make this tool for wider, wider application. Talking about wider application, if I understand correctly, All Plays Welcome is a part of a bigger project that is called Project Humanity. Project Humanity explores humans' own potential and undiscovered perspectives, right? And uh, in one of the articles that I read about you guys, it said that the mission of All Plays Welcome is actually to grant all people with disabilities this right and ability to express themselves freely. I think that's a marvelous mission. However, is there a plan to scale such projects, helping people with disabilities to unleash their creative potential? And how scalable is it at all, given, given the bespoke technology that you're using and given the level of sophistication in each particular case? Yes, I'd like to scale this project. 
And actually, we already have the gaze input tools used by other patients on the training and the children living with other conditions than ALS. In order for the, for this project to scale larger, we want to collaborate with more companies that are willing to work together with us, both uh, visionary and financially. I believe there is a win-win relationship in such collaboration. Branding and the social support can be done at the same time. In case of Japan, advertising expenses in the year 2022 is around 7 trillion yen the highest in the record. If you speak of it as a national budget, this amount is significantly high. By companies and the creative industry to proceed hand in hand, we can make the world a better place with our creativity and ideas. This is our way of thinking. And uh, in terms of technological scalability, as you said, the project is still at the early stage. So each tool requires turning for each user. And to be honest, it was impossible to realize these tools 10 years ago because the technical equipment was very, very expensive. There is a general tendency that the equipment costs become more affordable and that use become more common. So we would like to make these tools for a wider uh, application. In our est establishment around 10 years ago, we have been creating various things based in Tokyo. But we want to go beyond the boundaries of a nation and collaborate with teams around, around the world. So please feel free to reach out from our website or contact me and let's create a playful innovations together. Thank you so much. And this has been the short story of All Players Welcome, and I sincerely hope that there will be more players welcome in this project in the nearest future. Thank you so much, Naoki.